Who is Jeremy Puckett? My brother. Where is Jeremy now? In prison. Why? He's been convicted for murder. He was wrongly convicted. In 2002, Jeremy Puckett was found guilty of the robbery and murder of 18-year-old Anthony Galati and sentenced to life in prison without parole. He knows that he's innocent. Like, this is not something that he's capable of doing. Galati was found shot to death, execution style, along a rural stretch of White Rock Road in Rancho Cordova in 1998. Homicide detectives searched for his killer, but the case went cold until Israel Sept, who was locked up in state prison on unrelated charges, came forward more than a year and a half later, naming Puckett as Galati's killer. Despite having no physical evidence tying Puckett to the crime, the prosecution used Israel Sept, who'd already been implicated and convicted in Galati's murder, to act as their star witness in the case. Puckett has spent the past 16 years in prison for a crime the Northern California Innocence Project says he didn't commit, and while the legal organization is waiting for a response from the California Supreme Court on their habeas petition, we wanted to find out more about who Puckett was before he was convicted. He was the funny guy in the group. He was the guy that was always making people laugh. He was the person that if you needed him, that he would go to you, um, that you can go to him and he would help you. Where did you guys grow up? Um, we grew up in Rancho Cordova. Um, life was, um, my dad wasn't in the picture. Um, my mom was around. Jeremy was the father figure to me. Born in Sacramento, May 5th, 1976, to Freddie Puckett and Lorraine Wright, Jeremy was the oldest of three siblings. His parents never married, and Knox says Jeremy helped to raise her. He was kind of the man in the house, and he had to make sure that I was doing what I needed to do every day. Were there any um, specific things that he did, uh, any, any times that you can remember that he, that he helped you do something? Yeah, he made sure I went to school or he beat my butt. <laughs> what was he like in school? He played sports up until he was in high school. Um, he was very athletic. I mean, every, his coaches loved him. According to Puckett's probation report, he dropped out of Kinney High School in Rancho Cordova in the 11th grade, which is around the time his run-ins with the law began. When Puckett was 16, he became a ward of the state after he and four other kids were arrested for punching and kicking a younger teenager. When he was 17, he admitted to firing off a rifle in his backyard. Several months after his 18th birthday, he was arrested again, this time as an adult, for firing a weapon at an apartment complex and then fleeing from police. Before Puckett turned 19, he'd be convicted of breaking into two homes and sentenced to more than a year in county jail. In August 1999, a couple months before Israel Sept would come forward and finger Puckett for the Galati murder, he was convicted of battery after court documents say he and six other suspects beat up two men. Despite his criminal record, Knox says murder isn't something her brother is capable of. At some point, his innocence is going to come to light. He's going to come home. When he was arrested, what was the reaction from the family? Honestly, it was like our worlds were ripped apart. There was no, honestly, there's no words that can explain the way that we felt and we feel every day. And during the week of the trial, I mean, were you able to communicate with him, talk to him to see how he was doing? Were his spirits high? Yes. He knew he was coming home. Um, during trial, I lived in another state and I was going to come home um, to be at the trial. And he kept telling me there was no need because he was coming home. On February 8, 2002, a jury found Puckett guilty of first degree murder and second degree robbery of Anthony Galati. My mom called the house that I was with and they walked through the door and when they walked through the door, I seen it on their face that something was not good. What did you say? I had an emotional breakdown. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything for a really long time. And now 16 years later, he's not home. And it's still a part of us that is missing. It's still a part of my heart. Like he's, something was ripped out of me and it hasn't been there for 17 years since he's been gone. What happens if he never comes home? I can't, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. <laughs>